Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and I actually managed to get my hands on a 4090 Strix. Now, I moaned a couple of generations ago that I thought the Strix needed a bit of an update aesthetically and they did do a marginal update with the 30 series cards. It did look nice, it was kind of a step in the right direction but it felt a bit safe. Now, I know a lot of you out there don't like RGB, but a lot of you out there do. And it doesn't necessarily need to mean unicorn puke where it's just doing all the colors all the time. It can just mean that you tune it to work with the aesthetics that you want from your system. And I think kind of that's where they've gone with this. In that, I actually like the lighting on this. Now for starters, I will say they've gone in a very different route for Asus with the RGB because normally when you turn it on, it does do unicorn puke. But because of the design of the card and you can see that they have that red and white, at, sorry, red and blue actually on the face of the card that you'd see if you turned it up uh, vertically anyway. But it's been a long time since I've seen color on a card because they're normally silver, white, or black. And there's never normally anything really going on with them. Not any fixed color anyway. So the red and the blue is much welcomed and I think it's a refreshing change. But they've kind of extended that into the lighting on the card because it's if you when you don't do anything to it, which I haven't, it does just go red and blue through. And my background is red and blue. But when the colours mix, you get that kind of purpley, pinky colour going on. And that's all I've done in the background. Uh, add in shadows and stuff to it. And that's where you get your colour spectrum from. And that is what they've done with the card. And I do really like it. The rest of the card, big, chunky, absolute massive card. And we actually did a little graph just to show you the, the size differences with it. And the Asus is definitely the biggest in the pack, as you can see. But to carry on looking at the aesthetics, it's a big, chunky, thick, or I'm now going to try, probably fail, but try and start a movement where we call these big cards girthy. Because there's some serious, seriously girth on that for a graphics card. You can see the massive opening down the side that you can see visually if you have it mounted normally, it's all heatsink fins and done very well as well. It's kind of got that nice symmetrical, just single block thing going on. So many times with other cards down the side there, you'll be able to see the uh, heat pipes and stuff and broken sections, whereas this is just really nice and clean and it just works. On the back plate as well, down the open end where the fan can blow through, that is all multi-layered machined aluminium on that back plate. And it's just, the ROG logo stands up from it. It's, it does have, I hate to say it, a nice kind of uh, burly and well-made vibe and feel to it. There's no creak to the card. Admittingly, I have the uh, support there to show you, but it doesn't need it. I've literally kind of had to squeeze it in there and lock it all off. Um, and it is, I think really the only disappointing thing that I've really found on the card for me personally is the fact it's only got a two slot bracket on the back and it's quite clearly a three slot, maybe even 3.5 slot card, but I think they should have put a nice big open back plate on the back of it and also to kind of help with the support. Not that it needed it, but just it feels like it should have been there. Down the other end as well, right down the very end, uh, there are two four pin PWM uh, normal case fan power headers. Now I say down the very end, but we've obviously got to the point with these cards where a lot of people are asking, does it fit in my case? And we've given you a graph so that you can have a look. Uh, most cases also will tell you the maximum length graphics card that you can get in your case. But saying that, uh, the NZXT H5, they actually said the Strix wouldn't fit. So there is a lot of talk about these cards not fitting. And recently Acer said to me, NZXT said the Strix will not fit. 
in the H5, which is their new case. My review is live on the channel. So technically you could say it won't fit because of the bracket at the back and you can't really kind of get in there to get it around. So for most people, it doesn't fit. But here's the trick. And this is something that you can use for most cases, although uh, if you have an AIO up here with your uh, hoses hanging down, you may need to remove your AIO. But the trick is, it's quite simple. It's just about the angles. And then you can get it in nice and easily. Now I'm not screwing it up because I have to show you this in another case, but there you go, in and out, nice and simply. Next is the Asus AP201. Now this is a X670EI, so ITX motherboard in there, uh, but just because of appeasing the fanboys, we could have used the Intel version as well. Now I would have preferred to have used an MATX version in this because it's an MATX case, just because, you know, small motherboard, not so small case, a little bit confusing, I would have preferred to have used MATX. But these are just the ones I have here in the review pile. So I have it in here in the AP201. Now in the standard configuration, there would normally be uh, the front panel on like this. And what I've had to do is move the power supply uh, mount right to the very top. Haven't put the power supply in yet. I'd advise you do it after as well. And then uh, effectively in the side like that with a little bit of an angle, and then it will go in. The card comes to about here on the case, which is going to give you a little bit of room for your power supply cables. Because obviously you need to get them in. If you've not seen the AP201 review, it is also live on the channel because I do lots and lots of reviews. Uh, so that is also there. If you did want to save yourself some room though, other options could be getting the SFX low-key power supply from Asus, because that's a thousand watt might give you a little bit more jiggery pokery room but you are just going to have to get very creative with your cables because they are going to sit around this side of the graphics card now there is some venting on here uh, and this is where the two pwm headers are but i don't think it will make too much of a problem you're just going to be covering up the end of the the lighting bit and i think you could probably get creative with some plastic card and stuff there as well if you wanted you're just going to have to pull all the cabling right the way over to keep it out of the way on this side i do think you could do a fairly good job of it in that case now i don't want to show you every case on the planet because i'll be here for a month for sundays but it's just to give you an idea that even with a case that this one it didn't even look like it would fit to start off with because of how much it hangs into the power supply side of things but if you're careful, maybe get some friends to help, you'd be surprised how many times people say it won't fit and it probably will. So massive card, massive card. Is the cooling performance any good? Well, I can confirm that in uh, reality, it is massive, it is quiet, very quiet. And then normally when you kind of link those two things together, the fact that it is so quiet, you get to the point that the thermals aren't very good and it's actually the coolest card we have tested from the 4090s uh, so far. And that was without touching any fan profiles or anything like that, just left it alone, fit it, run thermal tests. They were the scores that came out. When we did those thermal tests, it did then spit out these clock speeds. Now this was something I was quite surprised about. And normally, this is a telltale sign that things aren't going to go well or too well in the testing in that the uh, average clock speed, as you can see here, you can see the legend down in the bottom left hand corner, the average clock speed, which is the white bar for most of them, but you can see the highlighted color for the Strix. Normally the average means upmost performance. And with the Strix actually, didn't do massively well in that. And all of the cards, when we test this, get tested in exactly the same way. Clearly, clock speed wise, the uh, MSI Supreme X is an out and out runaway 
winner. And, but when we start to look at the games, now one of the things I do want to say is if you go to the OC3D website, there are loads and lots and many, many more games for you to uh, go and have a look at. Kind of pick a few highlights for the video so that we can talk to you about it, give you an idea of where the good is and where the bad is. If you want to go and chew on some more meat, then you can go to the OC3D website and the link is underneath. Also, if you like these kind of um, videos where I just ramble on and talk to you about my experience with stuff, then you can like or subscribe or please comment and do whatever you like. I read all of the comments anyway. So, uh, performance, I have to say it was a mixed bag. Genuinely was a very mixed bag. So it never ashamed itself but at the same time, there was never a point with the Strix that I felt that it was running off into the distance and uh, winning uh, favour, maybe, or definitely not benchmarks. And that we've, we obviously have tested a lot of them. And it was around the middle, which is surprising, for want of a better term, because the Strix itself... Uh, comes in, there are two models, and I have the more expensive of the two because I have the overclock model, and that comes in at 2249, so £2,249. That is £550 above MSRP. Now, I won't go into the politics about uh, MSRP prices and Founders Edition prices and stuff like that because you've probably seen it before and you've probably made your own mind up. You're either going to think I'm kind of favouring Asus or hating on NVIDIA, one or the other. So I'll just leave it and you can kind of make your own mind up. But £550 is a lot of money. That's almost the price of an entire decently specced graphics card back when prices were sensible. Uh, now, do I think it's worth £550 more than a founder's? And it's a definite, difficult place to go. Uh, founders, are you going to be able to get them for starters? Because there might just be a big batch at the start and then you can't get them. A lot of us like things to um, look and match and like look nice, sorry, and match. So a lot of people that buy a Strix will have a Strix motherboard or a, or a ROG Maximus motherboard or whatever. So we do like them to match. But at the end of the day, it is over-engineered. So there's many more phases on it that it needs to, which is why it runs so cool and the cooler on it itself is absolutely amazing and chunky and hench. You guys at home are going to have to make your mind up whether you want to spend all that extra money to have one of these in your system. I'm going to go out there and say I genuinely want one of these in white. I would love to see one in white. And if there was one available in white, I think I would be one of the sheeps that would probably go and grab one and have it in my rig in a heartbeat. Because there's something you can't explain about this. So uh, I've tested a few of the cards now and I've had the, the Gigabyte Wimforce and I've had the Supreme. The Supreme is very nice, but it made me feel like I wanted to paint it because I wanted a white one. Uh, the Aorus comes in at MSRP, 1699 little bit of flex to the card. You can see they've built it to a price point. It does the job. I would say that's the sort of thing that you fit because you just want the frames and you're not worried about anything else. You do need to pay the tax though if you want to build a very aesthetically pleasing rig that's not only going to smash frames out of the park but is going to look like an absolute unit while it's at it. Now I did have a play with the overclocking on this although time was tight, my schedule, not Asus's schedule, and it did very well. One of the things I would say though, that from personal experience with these cards and spending time overclocking them though, is I normally find the instability when DLSS is running. Not sure why, 3D Mark DLSS, 100%. Uh, Control DLSS is another one, falls over a lot if you've pushed the card that a little bit too hard. But run the other benchmarks or the game without DLSS and I was getting over 100 megahertz extra without that running. Whether that's a driver thing or just trying to make the actual core itself do too much because obviously there are different factors going on inside that we're, we're overclocking and playing with and maybe that's kind of the, the failure point. But 
I did do some uh, 3D Mark runs just to have a quick run through, just so that you can have a look and see. And although the differences in the graphs aren't very big, the differences for those benchmarks as a whole, compared to if we were to drop them in with everything else, is very different. Now, yes, you will have to look at the overclock one and then have a look at the other one, because we didn't want to muddy the graph of the, all of the cards together with the overclock results for the strips, because this is the first one I've spent a considerable amount of time on. The MSI and the Aorus I didn't get a chance to, just because I had to get stuff done for launch. So this is the first one that I've really had time to have a good play with. I did change the fan profile a bit, still didn't make it noisy, still kept the temperatures down because I actually moved the power, the temperature target, I moved my temperature target when I overclocked it down to 75% anyway, so that it would uh, cool better. And it was just a joy to work with, if I'm completely honest, but obviously the price is going to sting. But I have looked around the uh, retailers to look for that price, and I can say, that uh, all of the big retailers don't have stock because they've sold out already. Um, so uh, let's hope we don't end up back at Scalper Heaven because we're not gonna have people wanting to use them for uh, mining, but at this present moment in time, it would appear that despite cable problems, we are still getting gamers falling over each other to try and get these things. Ah, cable problems. Asus have a 12 plus four pin uh, cable coming for the ROG Thor power supplies. So you, it will go straight into the power supply itself and it means you don't have the adapter. Uh, that would be my advice to anyone looking at buying this and any of them is the uh, 12 plus 4 pin to 4 PCR Express 8 pin adapter. Get that, throw it away. Do not use it. Get yourself a direct to power supply to 12 plus 4 pin cable. If your power supply does not support that, I still would not use 12 to 4 pin adapter. I would actually, at that point, advise you with safety in mind of upgrading your power supply so that you've either got one of these cables natively or you're going to have the ability to be able to go and upgrade it. Cable Mod do them for a wide range of power supplies out there, but please do make sure that you err on the side of caution with a 4090, stay over a thousand watts if you're going to go for a 12 plus four pin into the power supply um, uh, PCI Express uh, connectors. If you're gonna go into one of those, stay over a thousand watts, just so that you know you've got that little bit of headroom. I'm personally here using a Corsair HX1500i and I have had no problems. Also, this is a Corsair cable and I have bent the bejesus out of it not had any problems. So, there we go. We will see what happens with NVIDIA going forward. I don't know what's gonna happen, we will have to wait and see, but that is just my advice for you to err on the side of caution at the moment. And I do think they will get things sorted out, and I personally think what's gonna happen is the manufacturer is either gonna be changed for that cable adapter that's being sent out, or it's going to be massively, massively upgraded. I personally don't think that it would be a bad idea if NVIDIA got cable mod in, involved, but I hate, hate, hate those adapters anyway, because they're not long enough. You really want them like 30 centimeters long at least so that you can hide the connectors away and everything's that little bit tidier, really, because they've never been aesthetically pleasing enough for me ever since I saw them on the 3000 series launch. So, lots of talk for us there, lots of things to kind of absorb and think about, cables, overclocking, cooler, love the looks, love the lighting, built like a tank. I even forgot to mention the fact that it's got a performance and then a silent mode. Don't think you need the silent mode, leave it alone, bang it in P mode, enjoy your frames per second, hope and pray that your CPU can keep up. But for now at least, this has been the tiniest one with the ROG Strix RTX 4090 overclock review out ding love you sis